Red is a new play by John Logan uh, about the great American 20th century abstract expressionist painter Mark Rothko. The play takes place in a, in a very specific point in time when Mark Rothko was occupying 222 Bowery and he was working on what became known as the Seagram murals. And it was a huge commission at the time for a series of paintings that were for the Four Seasons restaurant in New York. $35,000 they are paying me. No other painter comes close. Imagine, a frieze all around the room. The play's time scale is roughly two years. And in that time, we see Rothko with his assistant. Ken is a young man who enters on day one at the top of the play, almost in a job interview, to be an assistant for Rothko. Ah, what do you see? Right. But do you like it? <clears throat> Speak up? Yes. Yes, of course you like it. How can you not like it? Everyone likes everything nowadays. So it's quite a terrifying prospect for this young man who may or may not have an art background. So what do you aspire? I, I want to be a painter, so I, I guess I aspire to painting. Then those clothes won't do. We work here. Hang up your jacket outside. What I love is I love the the excitement of the practical element of the play. This is a play set in a studio. As an audience member, you're a voyeur. We've recreated Bowery very, very accurately. Um, and, and what you actually see aren't being made. I get to prime canvases. I get to sort of sift paints. I get to boil, size, you know, all these various things, which on a purely kind of tangible level is very exciting. The, the physical labor that goes into creating art, and I think that's something that audiences haven't seen very often. You know, we haven't got sort of painters talking about art and daintily touching up an already finished canvas. We've got two men physically working, making stuff. The technical side is explored um, uh, alongside a wonderful, intelligent and emotional debate about the nature of art. So I went to the Modern last night, I saw the Picasso show. And? I don't think that he's so much concerned with generations passing away. Yeah, don't kid yourself, kid. That man, though now a charlatan, of course, signing menus for money, like Dali, when he's not making those ugly little pots also for money, that man, at his best, understood the workings of time. Where's the receipt? It's a play about art in, in the most wonderful sense, in everything that that word means, whether it matters whether it's an important thing in our lives and our culture, which I believe it is. There's one line in the play that I think was a way in for me, an amazing line. The child must banish the father, respect him, but kill him. We destroyed Cubism. De Kooning and me, and Smith, and Barnett Newman, and all the others, we stomped it to death. Nobody can paint a Cubist picture today. Well, you take pride in that? Stomping Cubism to death? The child must banish the father, respect him, but kill him. What, and enjoy it? Doesn't matter. Just be audacious and do it. It's about more than just a painter and his assistants. It's about more than just the art world. It's about the world we're in. It's certainly about the theater. And it's about uh, a number of themes all coming together. But in that line, there's something I think that resonates with a lot of people. It's tragic, really, to grow superfluous in your own lifetime, right? So the child must banish the father, respect him, but kill him. Isn't that what you said? And so you guys, you went after the Cubists and the Surrealists, and, and boy, did you love it. Now, now your time has come, and you don't want to go. Well, you, you can exit stage left, Rocco, because pop art has banished abstract expressionism. The, the play takes both characters, and by definition, both actors, through an extraordinary spectrum of, of emotional life. By what right do you speak? By what right do you express an opinion on my work? Who the fuck are you? What have you done? What have you seen? Where have you earned the right to exist here with me and all these things you don't even understand? Red? Oh, you want to paint the goddamn thing? Go ahead. Here. Here's red and red and red. I don't even know what that means. What the hell does red mean to me? From an actor's point of view, being on stage with one other man, specifically Alfred Molina, it's a treat um, because you get to start and you don't get to even blink, you don't get to breathe, you just come out a bit of a 
wreck after 90 minutes. And then sunrise. Sunrise? I meant the red at sunrise. The feeling of it. Oh, the feeling of it. Yeah, well, what, do you, what do you mean, the feeling of it? I didn't mean red paint only. I meant the emotion of red at sunrise. Sunrise isn't red. Yes, it is. I'm telling you, it's not. Sunrise is red, and red is sunrise. We rage against each other. We love each other. The, the relationship becomes father and son, mentor and student, master servant. It, 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 all of that is is captured in in the play. Red is passion. It's a red wine, red roses, red lipstick, beets, tulips, peppers, arterial blood. That too. They forge a very specific bond, one that allows us a way to see Rothko's process and understand the kind of artist Rothko was. Both characters have a, a, a very acute journey, which meets kind of in the middle. Red light district, red, red tape, rouge. Lava, lobsters, scorpions. Stop sign, sports car, a blush. Viscera, flame, dead folks. Traffic lights, tissue and hair. Slash your wrist, blood in the sink. Santa Claus. Satan. So. And it is symbiotic they gain something from each other. As well as allowing the play to also introduce the new wave of art that was coming in on the back of abstract expressionism. They're trying to kill me. I swear to God, they're trying to kill me. Those prosaic insects, those presumptuous, counter-jumping, of these sons of bitches. These are the same walls where I hang. You appreciate that? My gallery, my walls. Polluted now beyond sanitation. When uh, Michael Grandage gave me the play to read, by page 24, I sort of knew that I, I was going to do it because it it just touched me in, in a way that, that you know great plays do. You know, wonderful plays have a sort of they have an effect on you. It's almost visceral. You may not like it, but nowadays as many people are genuinely moved by Frank Stella as by Mark Rothko. That's nonsense. I don't think so. You know the problem with these painters? It's exactly what you said. They are painting for this moment right now, and that's all. It's nothing but zeitgeist art, completely temporal, completely disposable, like like Kleenex, like candle soup, like comic books. Oh, you really think Andy Warhol will be hanging in museums in a hundred years alongside the Bruegels and Vermeers? It's very exhilarating, and there's always a moment in the in towards the end where I have a little moment of of peace when I sort of change gear, and I said, and every night it happens, I suddenly think, oh no, it's nearly over. It's a real joy to play every night because it works on so many levels. I first worked on Broadway in 1998, and it's a very special experience. I, I've always had a wonderful time there. Very, very excited to, to be going back. Ironically, or randomly, when I was younger, I, I enjoyed practical art a lot, and I became weirdly obsessed with New York without ever having been there. And so these one-way signs and, and the walk-don't-walk walk signs before they change to the men, I did this sort of huge collage. I think if you speak to any English actor or actor period, they'll say it's a, a dream to work on Broadway, but certainly for me it is. And, um, and I cannot wait. <laughs> The Donmar Warehouse has been very fortunate to bring some of its work to Broadway in recent years. We've presented uh, Frost Nixon, Mary Stewart, and most recently Hamlet with Jude Law. So to bring a new American play this season is a wonderful privilege for us. To be able to present a 90-minute piece of theater in Mark Rothko's studio, a studio that comes with the smells of a studio, a studio that, it, where every part of it is operational, is a great challenge for us and a wonderful and an exciting journey for audiences to go on, to be able to engage uh, in that relationship with them, in that environment with them.